Hello everyone and welcome to the new episode of UX Banter podcast. This podcast is presented by Galaxy UX Studio and powered by Galaxy Weblinks. Don't limit your challenges, challenge your limits. A guest of this episode is a compassionate designer who is striving to make a difference with human centric design. He has a broad range of experience from well-known companies like Nike, Altashian, Rolls-Royce, Salesforce, O2, Zolando and many more. He's a speaker, mentor, consultant, and an award-winning creative freelancer. Please welcome senior UX designer from Artex Design Studios, London, Mr. Al Turgut. Thank you so much for inviting me, Dushan. Al, thank you so much for joining us. And we've been, you know, communicating with the team and everybody that to make this happen. And it took us about what about four or five weeks to get yeah. here. I hope that you're doing well health wise and uh, all yeah, things I feel are much more better. I'm glad that I didn't miss that sh- this, just, <laughs> this chance because of my health. <laughs> uh, great to have you here. So um, while we were, you know, just going through the journey that you have made with so many brands and becoming a creative professional, what has been your journey like? So, yeah, I've actually, like, eight, nine years ago, I started my journey. My bachelor's degree actually is from information systems engineering and computer science. But while I was in my journey to like coding and everything, I realized that I'm just more into the stuff that uh, more in creative side. I don't mean that develop is not creative; it's completely different part of the creative side, the show, and like how actually be the experience is gonna be. I was more interested in those, so I kind of shift my focus while doing my master's degree on my master's project to the user experience part of the. Of the project and then from that point on uh, it was it has been like quite journey for me through going through the perm career at the scene the nike for like four years of uh, experience and after i gained my uh, confidence and also a portfolio that i can i can show off and going into the uh, freelance direction was really really career changing for me what inspires you in designing UX or UI, what is your prime source of inspiration? So it's a really nice question. Actually, uh, the main thing is uh, to solve the, the problem that people are facing. So because as a UX UI designer, you are actually seeing the, 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 the problem uh, as, a, as a kind of opportunity to solve and create a better experience for the people who's going to be using that solution. And with the nice UI, actually, you are showing off your product. And if it is a case where people are going to be using and enjoying the product as much as you're designing. So when I feel that that the product itself is going to make maybe a little impact on the community, and at the same time, people are using what has been you you are designed of actually feels me a more uh, motivation to my work and to create the best experience as much as possible. Kind of uh, empathize with them. And also while people are using the product itself, they might be empathizing as well while, if they are enjoying uh, while they're using it. Cool. So you just mentioned that you come from a technical background. You have your engineering uh, degree. And uh, how does that actually help in doing UX? Yeah, the thing is, the seeing and what's happening in the back end really helped me to understand from the first point of view what I wanted to do and also from the experience that I gained from the technical background, especially through my UX projects, I can able to easily communicate with the development team to actually understand what their, what their problems are and what the solutions will be to come up with a kind of a mutual solution that we can both happy with it. So it's in terms of uh, feasibility, uh, talking through their language is helping me to create a bridge between the stakeholders and the development team and to create the best design that can be possible for all people can be happy at the end. 
true. Any specific technical skill that you would recommend that the non-technical people in the design community should ideally learn or know about? I don't think you need any development background at all or any kind of a knowledge to be a, one of the best UX UI designers. What I know is from my experience, you can actually know lots of things, but in order to expertise on something, if you want to be a master on something, I believe, the focus should be on that all the time. So if you actually try to be a designer and a coder at the same time, mm-hmm. first you will re- need lots of time and you will actually use lots of energy to both of the side. And maybe in a couple of years, you will know something, but being an experienced in only one as, as the option. Otherwise, you can't actually be the master of it. I don't think we don't have much time because we have hobbies, we are trying to best. And design is a huge ocean that every day, every week, like, Every year you are learning a new thing, but the trends are changing. The game is changing. The solutions are softwares are changing. Like, therefore it doesn't finish. So you have to always in the track of what's happening in the market to understand what's going on. Meanwhile, at the same time, from technical perspective, new game changing tools are ending up in the market as a designer that you need to learn. So in order to focus, in order to be a very good designer, Mm-hmm. I think you have to use your time in the design perspective rather mm-hmm. than coding if you want to be a really designer. So practicing so, the profession, I think, uh, is the suggestion here that if we are true. practicing what we have already know and make it better, there is already so much to learn. But a little bit of technical background won't hurt. <laughs> no, definitely not. And of course, it doesn't hurt, like I said, it's very good for me to definitely, especially the meetings with the development team, understanding their problems mm-hmm. of what they're facing and uh, or I'm uh, just giving a direction to them to, you know, but you, you said that you couldn't do this, to, but you know, there is an example of that you might want to use it because mm-hmm. I know where to gather that it information. Happens, yeah, true. So it really helps them to understand uh, what my designs are and have a mutual uh solution that we both are happy cool so you have worked with some of the the big brands and different domains as well they are not just regular run-of-the-mill brands but if you think about rolls royce or o2 or nike in the mix and altasian they come from very different uh, school of thought they are different type of products and services which are being offered there so what, uh, there, there are two questions, actually. One is that what sort of processes, differences that you have seen between the industries uh, when we jump through? And second is that what have been your key learnings while working with these big names? So, of course, the way of work was different depending on the project itself. The main difference was this for me was to the products. So my key is mostly focused on the e-commerce. From raw source perspective, even though it's been known as car manufacturer, but there's an aviation side of that, and the product that I was designing for them was mostly on social networking tool. Uh, interestingly, mostly focusing on the aviation industry. Um, on the other hand, O2 was a big uh, digital transformation that focuses on the e-commerce, and Atlas is just SaaS dashboard. So the thing is, it was pretty important for me to be in different areas of the design, as especially as a freelancer, because experience is everything in our field, as you know. And as, as long as you have those different field experiences, you have a more chance to get more opportunities. And also as a designer, it, there's a big improvement for you, a big chance for you to improve yourself in, and with, with those challenges. And when I checked while designing those solutions, competitive research, you were able to see how big, the, like I said, the ocean are, especially in those fields, to compare what your product and what the others are solving currently, what kind of solutions they created so far. And, uh, you know, with this, you are actually learning more the market, the more from the UX UI perspective, the solution as mm-hmm. well. So you can actually gather those information to use to solve in the future. The funny thing I learned by the way, how similar 
even though they are in different market, how similar the solutions are. Because as a designer, either e-commerce or as a social networking tool, there is a filtering option. And filtering option is, is, the, is the mutual thing that both are using. And you have to know what e-commerce product by solving that problem with the filtering is it's a big knowledge that you can use that information through a social network or filtering. So it, it, it was really helping me solving those component-based problems through the other projects. So True. that was- I think yeah. in the end, we are designing for the users. It doesn't matter that, you know, what the solution is. The user always comes first, the components and the experience. And as heuristics goes, we always need to ensure that there is no steep learning curve. So generally the applications that we are providing or solutions for, they are not extraordinarily different from one another. True, true, yes. Of course, user personas are different. And also the main difference was, I can say, the company uh, cultures, definitely. Uh, that's what I expect. Because especially with these uh, big companies, you have to align with their strategy in order to bring the solution that they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, in order to do that, for instance, Nike, you were mostly on, even though they were like NTC, NRC, Nike app, lots of intuitives coming through to create a project that might help other problems. And uh, the projects that come with intuitive is mostly was where you um, create your own difference and being creative. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's been aligned with the strategy, on the other hand, when you work as a freelancer with other companies, even though they are bigger startups, you are assigned a kind of a project where you can actually either give your full creative control mm -hmm. from some resource perspective. I'm actually the creative director and the design lead in the project. So I can give my full creative control there mm -hmm. to create the best experience. But on the other hand, as a permanent employee, you will definitely have some uh, limitations you can, even though you uh, want to do your best, definitely have to align with your manager and also the strategy itself to create the best solution that company requires rather than you. Sure. Thank you very much for being so candid with us with those answers. So here I'm going to take a turn to our banter side All of right. things. So UX is done. Now we are at banter. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and I'm going to shuffle the deck so that I'm not sure which questions coming up first. But okay, so first question for you. Ready? Yes, I am. Okay, your favorite TV show of all time? Uh, TV show, okay, Breaking Bad. Okay, favorite holiday destination? That's a hard one. Uh, there are places that I want to go that I'm not sure of, <laughs> to be honest. Okay. Uh, uh, favorite holiday destination. Um, uh, so far, I believe, uh, yeah, uh, I believe Andalusia, Spain. Andalusia. Okay. And why is that? Uh, right now, I'm exploring the world uh, actually for favorite holiday destination, which I haven't found it yet, but currently. Okay. But because I'm mostly thinking about kind of a Maldives and everything, uh, but uh -huh. that might be the best place, but I haven't been there, so I can't share right now. But uh, Andalusia was a nice journey for me, both cultural aspect and also uh -huh. a, a nice summer holiday. So you can do both of them at the same time. Okay. A book that had big influence on you? Uh, there are a couple of books, definitely. I'm a big book, book geek. Uh, the first one will be either Crime and Punishment or Anna Karenina. Wow, heavy ones. I mean, I, I tried, I do read, but those, the two books, just exactly those two books, and you can involve, I think there is one more, that I, you know, I go, I try to read them, but it doesn't go anywhere. It, yeah, it, it is hard. It is a commitment. You have to at least read 50 pages per day in order mm. to not, you know, uh, be in track and not, not forget what's happened before. So I totally understand that. Books or movies? Movies. Still? With being... Uh, that depends. But I'm, as a designer, I'm more visual guy. So I really ah. fascinated with the nice cinematography <laughs> and nice visuals. So it's, and also it's more, uh, I have a photographic memory on faces and everything. And it's very easy for me to remember yeah, yeah. what i seen rather than i read so it's Ooh. more movies are more fascinating to me than one person 
alive or dead, would you like to grab a drink with? There are a couple of people actually. Recently, maybe I can say I will definitely want to grab a drink with uh, Christopher Nolan mm-hmm. or Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer would be great, wouldn't it? But he wouldn't play. I mean, he would just come and grab a drink and say, what are you thinking? Da, da, da. <laughs> 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 but Nolan would be a good, you know, good person to yeah. talk to, I believe, because they never know what he's thinking. And then, yeah, I would love to make a, a nice conversation with, uh, with some <laughs> thoughts. Right. Do sharing. you have a PhD in physics? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your favorite mobile phone app? Hmm, uh, that's interesting one. Yeah, mobile phone app. I was, I can't I say LinkedIn, I guess. I guess LinkedIn. I'm using that one. Yeah, I'm using that much often. I think, yeah, LinkedIn is, as a, as a designer, I believe, is, is a nice, really nice solutions that had so far in social network tool. Ah, I can actually, Twitter, I believe, might be the, my favorite one. Yes, Twitter, because uh, it's like a, casino or slotting machine that you can able, able to see in new things every time you see so so far in the series of podcasts that we have been recording here are the answers so we got calendar uh, notes tiktok instagram uber and now you've added twitter and linkedin to the mix i think i'm missing out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't yeah i don't like uh, instagram or tiktok that much to be honest um, I, don't, I think those places are really have a bad impact on people because it has advantages there for, but at the same time you are seeing uh, lots of uh, fake uh, things there right that doesn't represent the real, real right world. now and it has an effect on even though you see people are going for instance like holiday destinations uh, but there's another reason behind that that they just showing uh, so everything seems like um, creates a big i believe uh, psychological problem to people especially with this pandemic so true true I'm kind of that, that has that. caused a lot of problems especially yeah. uh, in the younger generation they get influenced by the wrong uh, sort of life expectations and then yeah. there is a big disappointment that comes their way uh, well so on that note what if you were a superhero what would your power be ah oh, that's another hard question i don't know i uh, ask the hard questions this podcast means business <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> i don't know uh what should it be i don't know <laughs> it's pretty hard um okay. i will definitely want lots of things about that like mm. <laughs> maybe invincible <laughs> But you just or, said that you want to explore the world. So why don't you just choose to, you know, be teleport yourself to any other place that you want to be? Might be, be teleport too. But uh, at the same time, maybe like there are lots of things that like you might do, like invisibility or affect people's <laughs> affect people's minds, you know, like uh, Charles Xavier, you know, those things. These are not the droids you're looking for. Yeah, these are not droids. Yeah, so there are lots of things. It's if I had only one chance, I would definitely think, as a, as a perfectionist, I would definitely think what should be the outcome doing my research, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but when you say Charles Xavier, I think you are not the first person to say that in our podcast, because from UX designers, we always want to understand what the what's going on in somebody else's head. And we just want the feedback to just finish the design. Yeah, Empathy is one of the superpowers that actually comes back. Um, so that is like in the uh, the entire season that has been one of the most popular one that you know we ended up with really that's yeah. that's pretty interesting looking forward <laughs> to hear the others so while we were talking about the travel part so window yeah. seat or aisle seat a window okay leaning on watching out yeah it's good and... to sleep <laughs> and the final questions one day in your life that you would like to relive? Hmm. That's, again, that's another thing that I have to think carefully because you, I, I might choose that I want to see one of my lost ones, uh, might be. 
my either grandfather or uh, grandmother, something like that, I believe. Uh, yeah. Or maybe, uh, depending, yeah, I have to think my memories. But that's a really emotional question. It is, it maybe, is. I mean, yeah, anytime yeah. that we want to dwell on the past, uh, those things do um, come up a lot. Um, and yes, I know that this is, wasn't the banter question, but it was just a retrospective question that where yeah, I believe, your values are. Yeah, I believe I might visit that my with my grandfather back in the day where I actually uh, got my uh, Michael Jackson album um, on 2004 or something. And mm. I got a game, Lord of the Rings, Battle of the Ring, Battle of the Middle Earth game that I was eager to eager to play and be went someplace and eat nice dessert. Maybe that that moment might be. I, I felt really uh, secure and uh, happy that day. So maybe that that day bought me, but I have to think carefully as well because I have only one chance. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay, with that, I am finished with the deck of cards that I had in my hand. Yeah, I'm sad. So... Those questions were really good. <laughs> I, I will continue. Okay, so we're talking about empathy part, right? And yeah. uh, whenever this question comes up that every designer has a different mm -hmm. method of a setting of empathy. So can you tell us some practical ways of developing empathy or connecting with the users? Definitely. So as a user experience, we should definitely think that firsthand we are the users uh if you want to design something it should be really easy for you for us as well we have to think we have to think that if you were using this solution software whatever it is is it easy for you to understand whatever is happening and is it looking good for you too uh how would it be really good experience for you from both ux and ui perspective you have to think carefully from as a user perspective, because you are the first user at hand. And in order to do that, definitely, you just have to do your research carefully with the competitive research and market research as well. And uh, you also have to ask right questions uh, to your stakeholders or the users to understand what their problem really are. And finally, like I said, problem, you have to define the main problem in order to come up with the optimum solution. Uh, the problem that you want to solve might be not the, the best, uh, the, the, the first priority one. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is good to solve all the problems, but it is the best one to solve the main problem than solve the others. So people both from stakeholder perspective, they can be happy and from user perspective, they can be happy and you can be happy at the same time. So you can continue on, do your, your own improvements that you really wanted to solve. Okay. So when we are in the, the solutions approach, so how do you strike a balance between designing simple and minimal interfaces yet providing all the necessary information to the user? The minimal content approach uh, comes into question here. So the key point over here to align with the product owner and also the, the research that you did so far. So setting up what the information structure in that design at the first hand is really a key point. For instance, let's say um, you are designing a filter where you have to know how many choices that you might uh, choose from that filter. So if it is like, like 100, then that means that you have to come up with another solution because in that filter, choosing one from 100 will be a big problem for users. So maybe solution will be dividing that into a couple of clusters so they mm -hmm. can actually choose groups. They can choose from not only from one filter, but maybe a couple of filters to make it a more impactful search. On the other hand, if you have only one, you don't even need filter too. So it is very important at first hand, I believe, to aligning what the information structure will be and what kind of information that's going to be used in that design. Then going to design phase, you can create this optimum so you can actually avoid uh, the problems uh, the design in the future too. So you mean information architecture plays one of the key roles here while we are creating the applications. I think that is 
one of the uh, the best methods to follow because you know the scope of the application we can also identify the number of screens which are going to be there the number of steps that a user is going True. to take what data will be requested on the individual nodes uh, while we are creating the ia i am 100 in agreement with you with what you explained Content. about Content the... is everything. Without content, <laughs> always yes. Content is the king, and context is the king. There are two yeah. kings that we bow to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so finally, if I have to, you know, the, the last question that I have for this podcast is, um, what would be your uh, advice? Be what your advice be to anybody who is now starting out in the industry? Of course, uh, yeah. I've been also doing mentoring too. I uh, really love to guide the people as much as possible with my experience. I'm not saying that I am the expert. I don't think you can be an expert while you are living your life. Like Marcus, <laughs> I really say it. Like if you are thinking the same thing uh, that you, ten years ago, you, you're not living. So uh, you haven't lived it yet uh, because you are changing and everything's changing. Your, your ideas are changing too. So, so still learning and we will be learning a lot. But what I can say is that if you are starting in this, in this journey, it's always good first and had know the principles of UX definitely from the, from the elementary, from baseline. You have to understand what the UX is, UI is. Uh, what kind of methodologies are you being used mm -hmm. uh, through the projects? What are the differences? What kind of testing methods are used in the UX perspective? All those principles, elementaries and everything, the basic knowledge, I believe, it should be definitely known first. Uh, and even though you know them, you have to revisit them. You have to get in your, uh, uh, the new books that come up, it's very popular. You have, I always get to know revisit the items and maybe I learn more. The second thing will be definitely was uh, to, uh, I know that the industry, especially the portfolio is very important, mm -hmm. but unless you work in an environment, you can't create your portfolio. There's a product in that, you know, that's, that's unfortunately a big problem. Yeah. So what I will suggest is uh, what they learn from their, college or whatever they did with their courses and everything the big important thing is over here to show that you know the basic and the, all those methodologies so creating a kind of uh, example uh, projects uh, prototypes and maybe intuitive like product uh, design that you can tell them as a case study in your portfolio very well structured to tell them the story wise in a way that how this project come up from problem definement because when you learn the basic UX principle mm -hmm. you will see that the best the first thing that you do, uh, do is define the problem statement so from problem statement how did you get that problem solve it and what did you deliver so well? even though you cannot actually tell this to us uh, to people who are recruiting uh, in your portfolio, this is a good start because that means that you have a basic knowledge how to do your stuff. Mm -hmm. And with the UI that you created for your own, maybe it's not a project that you did, but that shows your technical skills too. So you can able to see, oh, okay, this person knows the basic knowledge and this is the how the, uh, the solution itself. And, and that might be give a chance. So, this is the second one. And the third one will be portfolio is really important. Like I said, people say generally at least six projects is a kind of a, where you feel like an mm -hmm. like experienced designer. But for a junior, I believe I will definitely recommend at least create three projects uh, or well, it can be either volunteer or maybe internship and everything. Just make your best to create that case study while of course asking people all around the world experience like me for plus of people are actually talking with me through linkedin asking me giving giving me some advice or uh, other stuff to i do my best definitely to help them and with those like you can get the basic knowledge and of course while doing that apply for jobs and of course continue to work until you uh, be the 
really good at what you are doing. You can either get a, from technical perspective, get a screenshot of one of your favorite applications, put on Figma or Sketch, and try to create the best one. The the, the you know, one that is that is the one advice that you always give. That why don't you just try and see that what is the font sizing, margin, padding, leaning, curling, whatever they have used, they have you know gone through a journey and they have perfected the design rather than just you know recreating. I mean, creativity is yeah. obviously it is important, but just understanding the craft as in what what is already invented, what people see as a benchmark. And you are on a path to get there. I think taking a screenshot and, you know, just trying to recreate yeah. it. I think that is the best way of doing it. All the singers, they sing covers first before even coming out with their own uh, albums. Definitely, definitely. Like both Figma, Sketch, like, you know, just improve your skills from technical perspective other than your, uh, you know, information that you already gained. And, you know, just do that. And those will be the best way to start definitely to your journey and i believe with that way uh it's gonna be really if you still want to be a ux ui designer definitely because some people just want to change their mind definitely on the road <laughs> and it might not be like this is not True. what i want to do that's totally respectful uh but if you are really want to focus on you know you have to spend your day every day unfortunately to in the same subject and you know while learning and doing these things will definitely be a great start will be your in your career definitely so practice is what will make you perfect thank you very much alp yeah, for because so has a because has yeah. a line right uh, you know great artists great but uh, the best ones still yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> uh, i have one more so, one more which is uh, creativity is knowing how to hide your inspirations yeah. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> Inspirations are the key point. You know, you have to check. That's what I've, I'm always saying. Competitive market is is very good, important. You have to always check what's happening, what can yeah. be the best solution. That's so you don't have to invent or you don't have to explore, uh, rediscover the you know the other continents. It's been already discovered, but you can discover specimens uh, like the the new animal. Um, uh, specimens you know what i mean still been discovered through yeah, the yeah. africa we don't even know you can't create the you can actually discover the world again but you right. can actually discover those specimens or the, the like the kind types of animals the still of the it. as the yeah. as the saying goes again that don't reinvent the wheel it is already there you just need to repurpose it for the for the fact that how Definitely. people have been using it so yeah that actually concludes the conversation with uh, you i'm thanking you very much for joining taking time and even though you were sick you you know adjusted somehow for us and yeah uh, likewise i'm really happy that i actually talked with you it was really amazing journey for me as well today <laughs> i really appreciate it i really enjoyed our conversation hopefully i can do uh, yeah we can do more at the future we can do more so the next seasons that we are going to record coming future i definitely would like to talk to you more about what happens after this and then you know we'll we'll go specific on the topic and then we'll we are going to explore more ideas as they come so ladies and gentlemen this was the episode of this week's ux banter podcast alp target the guest that we had today he was kind enough to share his insights and the journey with us and i'm really glad that this we actually reached to this point where these sort of conversations are possible so thank you very much once again for listening in and thank you once again to alp for being a part of it have a great day ahead everyone bye